am. Me, me, me. Hello. How are you? I got tickets to Adele, okay? Let's, let's open the video there. You know how hard that is? I considered buying the front row $2,500 tickets. Oh my God. But I had to buy three tickets, so I was not. I, my credit card limit is only so high. <laughs> anyway, with that news, welcome to today's video. Today, we have a special guest. Hi guys. Adele. I'm just kidding. Adele. <laughs> this is Joe. I've known him for forever. You want to tell people who you are, what you do, and what's game day barbell? Yeah, so uh, I'm Joe Stanek. I'm a powerlifting coach, and uh, I also own a gym in Austin, Texas, Game Day Barbell. Uh, we're a 13,000 square foot facility that caters to powerlifting, weightlifting, bodybuilding. We got to go down to game day for whatever summer series we come up with. Last year we had a crazy summer series. I don't know what this year is going to be, but. Maybe I'll start weightlifting because you have some weightlifters at your gym, don't you? That's true. Go check out Game Day Barbell if you're in the Austin area for sure. And also, we're celebrating because Joe is launching his YouTube channel. I am. I'm really excited about it. You can check it out for mostly powerlifting content. Um, I'm doing a series where I actually interview a lot of the best powerlifting coaches in the world. Uh, as a powerlifting coach, I'm always really interested in that. So I've had uh, Marcellus Williams, who I know you just uh, had on the channel recently. Our most recent collab. Um, as well as uh, Steve DeNovi, uh, Matt Holden, a, a few other really great coaches. So you'll you'll see a lot of that content on there, as well as just you know different tips and tricks when it comes to powerlifting. It's been my living, uh, well, since you've known me. So I think I know a thing or two about lifting some weights on a barbell. It's like a bunch of super, super smart, super, super strong people, and they're just talking about lifting weights. Yeah. I love it. And then there's my channel, where I'm going to see Adele. Anyway, today is so many exciting things going on. We have new flavors, and Joe's going to try. It's for his first time trying Buff Chick supplements. We're going with mimosa, OK? I just got <laughs> married, y'all. We went down to Mexico, and I had a wedding. By the time you're watching this, it's already done. And um, we had some mimosas while we were there, so we thought, why not give our lifters, our favorite supporters, a little taste of mimosa. So let's try it. Taste test. I'm gonna need this because I had a very long drive up oh, here. Oh wait. Oh no, I can't do the pre. It's caffeine. <laughs> I usually do pump. <laughs> do we have mimosa pump too? What? This is gonna be my third serving of caffeine today. Oh, I'm boy. gonna be on 500 grams. Ah! Just kidding. Oh, that's good. It's light, it's tangy, it's tasty, it's missing the champagne alcohol, and it's not as bubbly as a mimosa would be, but it's delicious. I'm really impressed That's, with this. Yay! It has a little bit more tang than I would have expected. Honestly, I, I feel like I don't need any uh, mimosas going forward. I can just have this. Who needs to get drunk on Sunday brunch when you can just get jacked? <gasps> that should be the tagline for this. Anyway, we have mimosa, newest flavors, mimosa, and peach bellini in our buff free. Go check it out. So I know you have some bench press. Yeah. Uh, I do as well. I'm actually three three weeks out from powerlifting me myself right now. So last few heavy workouts, which I'm excited about. Um, so I've got bench press, and then I have my light deadlifts to do as well, uh, which are just you know how, light beltless work. How light are your light deadlifts? Uh, like three reds, nothing crazy. Yeah. So how much is that in pounds? Oh my gosh, I, I don't usually have to convert this. Uh, it's like 374, something like that. Yeah, I did that once. <laughs> once. When I when I met you in Scranton, I recall you yelling really loud for your last deadlift as you came out. Yeah, I used to go nuts to come to finish in like at least like 40th place. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 40th ain't bad. No. I was gonna say, I would kill for, for 40th place. I, I exactly. barely, barely qualify for nationals these days. We are old people now, though. I haven't even checked um, what the qualifiers are for women anymore, for, for anyone anymore, so. Yeah. They're, yeah, they're pretty high these days. I mean, for my weight class, which is 220, uh, it's like a little over 1,500 just to qualify. Damn! Yeah, yeah, so it's, it's pretty crazy. When you can't do, coach. That's been my whole career. <laughs> Same. All right. Grid, you want to work on your bench too? Yeah. <laughs> Another thing that I didn't really mention in my little, little intro is obviously I got a pretty big following on TikTok. 
Oh, super famous on TikTok, guys. Like, when I saw his TikTok, I immediately messaged him, like, what's the secret? What's the sauce? Give it to me. Nobody likes me on TikTok. Number one easiest tip for TikTok is uh, get in early. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's kind of how I managed to do it. But what I was going to say was, uh, on TikTok, uh, something that's kind of become the norm for a lot of people is to hate on barbell lifts. Basically, they're just like, if you're not concerned with lifting the most weight possible, why are you even doing those lifts? Which I kind of get. Like, you know, it, it makes sense. Like, if you want to be as jacked as possible, one could argue that, like, a dumbbell bench might get your pecs bigger than a barbell bench. To your point, if you're going to learn to lift weight um, on a barbell bench, you probably want to do it like a power lifter because those are gonna be the people that are moving the most weight, you know? Yeah. Um, recently, I spoke about the very depressing epidemic of girls who lift on social media, especially. A lot of times they're coaches, they have apps, they have programs that thousands of people follow. They lift so heavy, they are hip thrusting 500 pounds, and they refuse to barbell bench press. Mm. They just don't do it. So that's why our program for this macro cycle is called Bench Baddie, because we're kind of distinguishing. There's gym baddies everywhere. We love them. We love everyone make their own choices, but then there's bench baddies, mm -hmm. and they I they use that. the barbell. I love that. I love okay? that message. It's just the girls that get it get it, and the girls that don't don't. So if you ain't barbell benching, then see you later, sister. Just kidding. I mean, just go to somebody else's app. It's fine. Or you can use the substitution feature on Chonger by the day. Download now for a free seven day trial. Okay, enough plugs, let's lift. You see, Joe? If you want one of these, I can hook you up with one of these shirts. <laughs> oh, I can definitely rock that. Give me, give me a few months. Yeah, get your summer body ready. Turn around now and dance, dance, dance. I just wanna have fun, clap my hands. Turn around now and dance, dance, dance. I just wanna have fun, clap my hands. Turn around now and dance, dance, dance. I just wanna, I just wanna. All right, all right, Joe, you want me to show you my stuff? Oh, yeah, 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 let's, let's okay, see this, let's see this. Okay, hold on, first of all, I need to get my ass over here. Okay. I dig it. I think it looks pretty good. If Joe likes it, I love it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I can I can totally tell that Marcellus uh, taught you that setup because of how you drive your hands into the barbell. That's a that's a signature way that Marcellus teaches the bench press of, of driving hard into the bottom of the hands like that. You know, he's my neighbor, so I gotta listen to Marcellus. He lives right down the street from me. Oh, you're kidding. No. He's been to Emerald's birthday party. Me and Amber are always talking about mom stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they live super close to me, to us. That's so cool. Yeah. open to one small tweak? Yes! Okay, so the only thing that I would say that I don't love about your setup is actually where you're starting from. Okay. So with where your grip is, you're ending up leading with your elbows a little bit more than I would typically like to see on a, a lifter. Um, so when you get down to the bottom, your elbows are a little bit ahead of where the bar actually is. Okay. And when the weight gets heavier, that's gonna make it a little bit harder to reverse the weight because the elbow is not directly under the bar on your chest. Okay. So what I would say is I want you to bring the barbell out just a little bit more, a little bit closer to your touch point because that's gonna make it easier for you to then lower the weight with your elbows directly under the barbell. Okay. So all about joint stacking. I've never heard that cue before, so I am excited. I'm just gonna go in so I don't freaking forget it. I just wanna have fun, clap my hands, turn around now and dance, dance, dance. I just wanna have fun, clap my hands, turn around now and dance, dance, dance. I just wanna, I just wanna clap, clap, turn around, turn around, dance, dance, dance. I just wanna, I just wanna clap, clap, turn around, turn around, dance, dance, dance. I just wanna, I just wanna clap, clap, turn around, turn around. Oh, that feels easy. 
here. There you go. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. I like that one! Yeah. Do you have any deadlift Yeah. Um, yeah, you gotta put more weight on that, Joe. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I, I should probably actually do my own sets, right? <laughs> um, so the, the easiest tip that I can give anybody who's deadlifting, whether you're pulling sumo or conventional, is just always going to be thinking about the fact that the deadlift is a leg exercise. Um, and also usually wear shoes when you, uh, when you pull. Um, but the fact that it is a leg exercise means that you need to use your legs. So the thing that is always going to get the deadlift moving is pushing into the floor. A lot of people try to yank on the barbell too much and they end up in a position where, uh, you know, when the weight gets heavy enough, they usually get stuck about here at their knees and that's because they're just using their upper body to move the weight. Whereas in general, if you just think about pushing the floor away from you when you get started, that's gonna make the deadlift infinitely easier uh, and make it a lot smoother through the entire rep. So just simply put, to illustrate that, like if I were to use my upper body more and sort of yank on it like this, I would probably get stuck about here, right? Whereas if I'm using my legs, when I start pulling, it's kinda all the way through going to be easier. So easiest way to implement that, just push the floor away from you. I like that. Turn around now and dance, dance, dance. Pretend you're, pretend you're Chuck Norris and you're pushing the, the earth away. <sighs> Let's see what we're doing here. We have a cluster set. Mm -hmm. I feel like this might be a little too heavy for me, but we're just gonna see with my new setup. It goes three, two, one. We're resting for 15 seconds in between. And I'm gonna do the self lift off. Will you guys just keep an eye, and if I fail, you just make sure I'm not dead. These are here. Yeah. We've been incorporating cluster sets into this new macro cycle. One of the reasons why I like them is that it does allow you an opportunity to practice your unrack and practice low rep sets while still, I'll be doing six reps here. So I'm still getting six reps in, but I get to practice my unrack three times. Let's see how it works out. It's like, I'm gonna unrack it and then immediately start my setup again. <laughs> Let's go, Maggie, you got it. Oh, no, 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 no. That kind of felt good. Okay. Looked good. Just crack my neck and then go right back into it. Just take your time. Take your time with the actual setup. Make yeah. sure you get all the components right. God. You got that last one in you. Last one, single. Well, easy. The cluster is helping me get a little bit more efficient and not drag it out as much. Yeah. Not that that's a huge problem to drag it out, but I mean, I'm trying not to. I feel like I feel like most power lifters, like if you give them the chance to rest for 20 minutes, they will. So, you know, way to way to go against the grain on that. Time efficiency. So, something else that you'll see about my deadlift lip setup in particular is you're you're gonna see that I pull with a little bit of a rounded back, which I know the internet does not love. Um, but for me, it makes my pull a little bit more efficient, makes the sumo deadlift, which is traditionally a little bit harder off of the floor, a bit easier. And for me, um, I have 
pretty large quads and oftentimes when I pull with a straight back, I'll end up getting stuck on them. Whereas if I pull with a rounded back, I'll usually be able to kind of pull around my quads because of where it puts my hands. So when I pull with a rounded back, it actually ends up making my grip slightly narrower and that allows me to kind of get past the point on my quads where my hands typically drag. It still will happen, but it'll happen less, if that makes sense. And the other thing that I do, which you just saw me do, is I never, I never pull a rep without re-gripping the barbell. I reset for every single one, which is pretty typical for a lot of power lifters just because we're never in a situation where we will have just done a repetition in competition. Yeah, I know a couple of you need to start full resetting your deadlifts because rep two, three, and beyond, it looks like shit, okay? <laughs> so take your time, let's do a full reset, and just like relax a little. Um, there's a time and place to try touch and go if you want, but especially if you're struggling with those later reps, if you're struggling getting something off the floor, or if you're struggling with your form at all, why not? Just take your time. You could even step away for a second, look at the bar and reapproach as if it were a single and you're just like stringing some singles together. There's nothing wrong with doing that. In fact, Maybe even for newer lifters, you might want to do that more often than you try something like touch and go. I see some people like just bang the, um, the deadlift on and off the floor and I'm just like, why well, don't just relax, like take it easy. Just give me a moment, okay? Scary. Particular. Grid's new setup. So new you haven't had the chance to really practice Seriously. it. Seriously. No, Coach he, Joe? He's kind of already got the positioning down where he's he's got his hands a little bit closer to his chest than his shoulders. So um, he's definitely implementing what I taught you right away. Um, the only thing that I would say is you do have a little bit of a tendency um, to kind of rush the repetition. Um, so leg drive is such a huge part of the bench press and I think it's the thing that most people miss when it comes to the bench. It's almost like it's your bracing for the lift, right? Um, and what a lot of people do when the weight is light in particular is they don't think about their leg drive as much and that tends to translate over to when the weight gets heavier. Like they're, they're not implementing it right away as they're getting set up. So my only advice there would be just kind of treat the weight like it is heavy because I would imagine if this were two or three blue plates on the barbell, you'd be being a little bit more careful about how tight you are when you get set up. Um, everything actually looks good. The way that you bench looks good. I would just say, just treat the, the weight like it's much heavier. Great. Consistency. Did you know that your feet are like this? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were doing that on purpose. You like it like that? I don't know. <clears throat> I, don't know. I mean, I still haven't, I feel like I haven't figured out. Yeah, let's keep going heavier for you so you can figure it out. Just if, go. So if that isn't on purpose and you're open to it, I could, I could potentially see you adjusting your feet just a little bit in terms of where you put them and you might get better leg drive that way. I think I like keeping my feet more narrow and my toes sort of pointed forward. Mm -hmm. And that way, when I push my toes through the like front of my shoe, cause if you were to, I mean, I guess you could push through like yeah, the soul of your right no, I'm yeah. probably exaggerating, but you're probably like right there. Yeah, it was you know? pretty flared. Was, yeah, pretty flared. Um, and and the reason that I didn't necessarily correct it is I do see some lifters feel like when they're this outturned that they're able to drive better with their legs. So I don't know. I thought you like I said I thought you were doing that on purpose. Um, the only people that I, I see do that usually have a little bit more of a narrow foot stance though. Mm. Um, you know like. You, we were talking about Sean Noriega. Um, if you look at his bench press setup, he puts his feet very far forward and he outturns them um, so that he's able to drive harder with his legs that way. Um, so you're just trying to be like Sean Grid? He's trying to cheat, is, is what it is. He's trying to cheat. <laughs> we love Sean. <laughs>
Really focus on pushing into the floor as you uh, bring that bar down to your chest, Meg. That little turtle back there, you know what I just said? I liked your tip though, on focusing on leg drive on the way down. Mm -hmm. I definitely wasn't doing that before. I was gonna say, yeah, so like I said to him, whereas, um, you know, we brace a lot through, you know, our, our core when we're squatting or deadlifting, the legs are your brace in the bench press. And if you pay really close attention to that, that clip, you'll see that as you're bringing that barbell down, your legs start to come forward. And to me, that's usually a sign that that weight is exerting more force on you than you are exerting mm -hmm. on it. So. If you, if you need a little like easy visual tip as to if you're using leg drive properly, it's always, are my legs shifting down the bench as I'm bringing that barbell down? So if you see them moving, you aren't driving hard enough with your legs. What is he bench like seven days a week? Seven days a week, three sessions a day. Wait, how much does he bench? How much does he bench? Five twenty nine at one sixty five. Raw, <laughs> drug God. free. If you deadlifted that, I'd be like, holy shit, you're amazing. Jeez. Yeah. Dang, what's his range of motion though? Somewhere in between flat backing and having like a huge arch. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's respectable. I yeah. mean, not that it's not respectable when you can like bump bump, but. Yeah, yeah. let me see if <laughs> I can find a. He's like, ugh, I don't respect. <laughs> see if I can find a good clip. This is my last cluster shit. I'm liking the clusters, dog, practicing. I know, I don't know this, but I would be willing to bet that I couldn't do a set of six of this without the cluster. <laughs> like uh, once. I think your first set you could have. Maybe? Okay. My, my second, that, yeah, my second set felt better form-wise. That was your, Joe, I was so focused on my leg drive that my foot started cramping a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> that was your that was your best set of three though for sure. I'll take it, I'll take it. are a little too close to being under my butt. I'm gonna bring them out just to. Just a hair maybe? Yeah, yeah, I felt like I didn't quite, felt a little more uncomfortable too, to be honest. Until I'm 
married. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Love that. I take my mic off when I go pee, <laughs> just in case you're recording. Sanitary. Joe. I don't want to get. And also for sanitation purposes. So, Joe, I noticed in one of your TikToks that you mentioned one of your favorite bench accessories to improve your bench was weighted dips. And that's not something I have a ton of experience with. I definitely do body weight dips as an accessory movement, but I've never really pushed my weighted. So I'd love to get some tips from you on that. Yeah. Can you talk about like why you like it so much or anything to add as far as like using it in your programming? Yeah, so um, like I said to you just now off camera, it's almost like a, at least the way I program it, I almost treat it like a secondary bench session within your bench session. Um, I will usually have my lifters work up to a top set and then they back off. Um, the reason being is that a lot of the ways in which the musculature is challenged in a way to dip is very similar to a bench press. So as long as you set it up correctly, the pecs are gonna be stretched in the same way, the triceps are gonna be stretched in the same way, that sort of deal. Um, but it tends to be a little bit easier to push and therefore recover from. Uh, not to mention that you get a lot of long muscle lengths, which we know from research is generally the longer you can train a muscle as far as length goes, uh, the more hypertrophy you're gonna get. And the one thing that I would say, the bench press kind of lacks in, at least from a power lifting context, but honestly, even in general, as long as you're using good technique, is you'll typically cut down on some range of motion. So the way to dip is useful in that sense that it makes up for that. Um, again, also just kind of challenging musculature and your joints in a slightly different way is also gonna generally be a little bit better for injury prevention. Again, at the end of the day, it's more about just making sure that you're on top of your recovery, that sort of stuff. But, you know, in, in a sense, if your bench press kind of goes awry and maybe, you know, your, your shoulders in a weird angle or something like that, just being, being in a position that it's a little bit more prepared for and say like a way to dip can be useful. That way it's more prepared to, to take loading in that particular way, so. Sick. And he just told me I get to work up to a top set, so. Yeah. A top set of one? Uh, usually, usually I'll go anywhere between three and five. Oh. I'm gonna try and hit a one rep max, though. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, no, I'll go three, I'll go three to five. Three to five. That's, a, that's a real thing. Like, people, there's, <laughs> there are weighted dip competitions in the world. Oh, sick. Yeah. You know, powerlifting might not be for me anymore, but what did you call it? You called it backdoor powerlifting. Yeah, yeah. Is that a common phrase? I don't think so. I think I just kind of came up with that off I think, the cuff. I think that's what I do. I do. Like, I mean, the best way that I would put it would be just kind of doing something similar to what powerlifters do and that you're trying to, you know, go as heavy as possible on, on lifts and get the best, best total amongst certain lifts just with random lifts. Oh, that's us. We do, I would say in between that and power building, what people refer to as power building. Is there a difference between power building and backdoor powerlifting? Mm, I mean, yeah, for sure. Like, I don't know. I don't love the term power building, personally. Um, like, I understand why people say it, because they want to be as big as possible and also as strong as possible. But I think, to me, good powerlifting training is that. Mm -hmm. I think, especially when you're, like, far up from competition, if you were to look at all the best powerlifters training programs, um, they're going to be pushing their, their lifts so that they stay strong, but then they're also going to be really pushing that accessory work. Um, yeah. Like, if I would describe the way that I program for people, it is heavier top sets, then all your back down work is pretty easy so that you can just kind of continue to refine your form. So therefore, it's not going to push you as hard, tax you as hard, your muscles are still gonna be slightly fresh afterward, and then you go into your accessories, you go ham on those, and then you get bigger that way. That's, that's how I program powerlifting, that's how Marcellus programs for powerlifting, and honestly, most of the really good coaches these days, I guarantee you, if you put all of our programs side by side, you would see that. We do off-season powerlifting. I say that Stronger by the Day is great for off-season powerlifting. If you're a powerlifter and you're like, you're not working with a coach one-on-one, -on -one, run a cycle. But we are focusing on our bench, but the rest of the program is like off-season squat and deadlift. Gotcha. Okay, God, I haven't done dips in a long time. <laughs> yeah. All right, any tips for my dip form right now as you see it? Well, uh, for one, I would have you uh, switch around where you're facing. Oh, here? Yeah. All right, and 
Would you rather my hands be more narrow or out here? So I always say for you to, because we're, we're talking about within the context of having a, a strong bench press, because we're bench baddies around here. We're bench baddies. Um, I, I always have my lifters adjust their grip so that it's at least close-ish to what they do on the bench press. Oh. So something like that. So that you take a similar, so that you're at a oh. similar angle. So not my start, but my bottom position. Yes. Would... So that it ends up being kind of similar. Something like that. Oh god, it's hard. <laughs> yeah. Holy fuck. <laughs> now, if it yeah, if it's too hard, obviously, oh, like man. make it make it so that it's tolerable. Like oh. you know, you don't want to make it uh, so difficult Speaking that you can't actually Max, do it. Here it is. <laughs> oh god, it's so much harder. Okay, okay. I think I can add about five pounds to that. <laughs> All right. Any other tips? So here, I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you how I typically do it. So I always I always like to use like the end half of the grips just because. And that's going to be closer to most people's bench presses. It's going to get a little bit more movement out of the humerus, which the goal of the pec is to move the humerus back and forth, right? So we involve the pecs a little bit more in that way. And then I always have my lifters kind of having sort of a proud chest, kind of similar to how they uh, look when they're arching, right? Because when you're arching, your back is usually slightly retracted, your rib cage is high in the air, that sort of deal. And then just for stability purposes, because usually people have plates in between, I, I don't have people tuck their feet up like this. I actually have them keep their feet uh, long because that helps keep the plates in place so that it's not shaking you around. Most of the time, most people's um, dip rigs are not exactly the most stable things in the world. So adding anything that you can to be more stable is going to help you get more out of an exercise. Generally speaking, the more stable your system, the easier it's going to be for your muscles to express force which is why like in powerlifting, we try to be as stable as possible. We try to you know, be as rigid as possible through the core on the bench press. We're using our legs to stabilize ourselves. The more stable we are, the more weight we move. All right, let me try straight leg bench batty. And again, if, if, that, if that wide is intolerable for you, like it's always gonna be better to just you know, go with what you're comfortable with. It's you know? not that it's intolerable, it's just kind of harder. <laughs> Well, you did just do a pretty heavy bench workout as well. There oh, you go. actually, I really like keeping my feet straight because I can nice little rest here at the bottom. <laughs> well, you you probably probably need to increase the height of that just a smidgen. Oh. There you go. Oh, okay, all right, all right. I think I can go a little heavier with a set of three. So you say work to a top set and then. Oh, when you reached over here, I definitely thought you were gonna grab this little puppy. I'm thinking I'll add a five kilo. That's what, actually, should I go lighter? I was gonna say, you can always, you can always go up, right? But, so like I said, one last tip before you do this, um, if you put your thumbs on there, you're gonna be able to drive more of the meat of your hand mm. into, I like that. into the rig. It'll help you be a little bit more stable. Oh, do I like that? There you go. Come on. Right there. No, threes. I'm going, I'm going threes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad, my bad. <laughs> yeah, three. Something, you want something that's around like an eight RP, two reps left in the tank, that sort of deal? That's usually what I strive for on the top set. I think that was my eight RP. Yeah, let's go, let's go five kilos. Let's go, let's do it, let's do it. Come on, baby. It's okay, it's okay to push to around a nine. Nothing wrong yeah, with that. Yeah, nothing wrong. Uh, okay, this might be my top set. We're going five kilos. For five reps. For three. Plus two. Maybe I'll do a cluster. Cluster. <laughs> Remember, she's, she's got to do back downs after, so you don't want to completely kill her. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Ryan, you want to see my new bench batty dip form? He said yes. There you go. Really good, man. One more. There you go. All right. That's my three rep max, y'all. Yeah. Any other tips with that after seat? So after that, after that set, I usually will have a lifter drop about 10% of that weight and do that yeah. for as many repetitions as it takes for them to get back to an 8RP, so two reps left in the tank. And I'll, I'll usually do that for two or three sets. For someone like you who is, isn't doing weighted dips a whole lot, I would probably only say two. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new with our guest coach, Joe. 
go check him out. His YouTube channel has just launched, so you could be one of his first subscribers. He's giving away free video content on YouTube for his first thousand subscribers, so let's get him to a thousand. <laughs> Thanks, and guys. check out his YouTube channel. If you're in Austin, Texas area, check out his gym, which is amazing, I hear. Probably biggest, baddest, best gym in all of the world. Whoa. High praise. Yeah. So um, thank you, Joe, for thank joining you. us. Anything else you want to plug? Uh, you guys can find me on TikTok, too. There's a lot of uh, smaller tips on there. It's it's at the Joe Stanek on, on TikTok. And like she said, if you're in the Austin, Texas area, please come check out Game Day Barbell. We are 24-7 for everybody. So even if you are a guest, you can jump into the gym just by hopping on the website. Even if it's 3 o'clock in the morning, you can unlock the door through there. So please come check it out. Check out all of our, our brands, fun stuff like that. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.